hearts are open Nothing here is hidden You are one desire You alone are holy Only you are worthy God, let your fire fall down Oh, let your shout Let our shout You're in now, fill the sky, and we are here for you. Yes, we are, we are here for you. Let your word, let your word move in power, and let what's dead come to life. We are here for you. Come on, can we all lift our voice? Oh yeah To you our hearts are open Nothing here is hidden You are one desire You alone And you alone are holy Only you are worthy, God Let you fire fall down Oh, to you our hearts Nothing here is hidden. You are one desire. It's you alone are holy. Only you are worthy, God. Let your fire fall down. Let your fire fall down. Oh, we lift you up. Oh, let your fire fall down.
Welcome to midweek again here. We're in a teaching series. We've been teaching in 1 Peter. And this, uh, this week, uh, we're in chapter 5. In fact, the first part of chapter 5. And I have the privilege today to be with my wife <laughs> teaching together. Thank this you. is great. We've been, we've been uh, uh, sheltered at home. And so you get to kind of re- reconnect in ways that has been really good. We loved it. Uh, and, and, and today we get to teach together. So it is like a double treat. I yes. love it. <laughs> It also is a really uh, amazing time teaching on this particular passage because yeah. we're, we're in the midst of the COVID-19 and obviously this is not passing anyone by. It's affecting everyone's life in yeah. some way. Also with this comes a set of in initially, you know, it was shutting down, shelter at home, staying healthy, staying safe, all that still I think is, is relevant. But we have come to a place where we also start getting other things. Uh, mental health, people staying home, children not being in school, Mm. anxiety, people losing their jobs, maybe not having paychecks. Um, And and so we understand lots of people are hurting. Uh, So this passage talking about this, even though it begins addressing elders, it really speaks to every person. And as we talk about this passage today, and I'm going to read the first five verses, and then we're going to look at a couple of truth that is powerful. It really speaks to, in fact, Peter's speaking to elders, what it means, but I'm, I, want, I want us to read it as every single person. Mm-hmm. If you're a parent, uh, you're shepherding your home. And how, uh, what does that mean mm-hmm. when you shepherd your home? What yeah. does it mean passing your family, you have children? What does that look like? Yeah. So we're talking about being leaders. In fact, what we're talking about today is servant leadership. Yeah. Because this passage is really kind of like a, a counterculture about what it means to be believers in difficult times. And God's model is always some opposite. It's not about self-promotion, trying to be the greatest, but it's about serving ourselves to great leadership yeah. and, and being that strong leader that way. It also kind of promises in this passage some incredible benefits in the midst of storms. 
So talking about COVID, talking about the times we're living in, unprecedented times, I think you find some, some of the thoughts relevant for you today. So I want to read the first couple of verses in 1 Peter. We have it. I uh, can read from my Bible, but let me read on the screen here. Uh, he starts uh, teaching to us here, and he says, To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder and a witness among Christ's sufferings, who, is all, who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve. Mm -hmm. Not lording over those who's entrusted to you, but being an example to the flock. Mm -hmm. And when the, cry, uh, the chief shepherd then appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Mm -hmm. In the same way, you who are younger, submit yourself to your elders. All of you clothe yourself with humility towards one another because God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. Mm -hmm. We're talking about servant leadership. And I'm not saying, you know, for anyone, we, Jennifer might share some embarrassing story even today about <laughs> my great servant leadership will be started out because I'm, I think everyone will have some uh, measure of pride. That's part of just human nature. We're trying to, you know, it's easy to self-promote. In fact, everything in our society will tell us to self-promote, to try to achieve, to uh, advocate for ourselves, but actually what scripture talks about is that you serve in your mm -hmm. leadership and you're being an example so he talked about leaders and elders leading but he also talked to the young people um, and and I think it's powerful the thought as we're living in this time to uh, consider that maybe the path forward I'm saying for city service for, in fact we've been living in uh, a crazy time I think a lot of people sheltered at home we've been kind of this essential network so for us it's been like hyper warp speed and we've been having food trucks going up and down the highways and in fact now we have this farmers to family food boxes that you started last couple of weeks and this week it's just increasing in fact just before we came another 10 trucks are coming yeah. I mean this is food boxes to families and we're serving but what has been amazing to me is seeing God's people serving mm -hmm. We've seen churches, in fact, we talked about almost 500% of normal increase of pods picking up has been, an, uh, has been an increase of frequency. God's people like turning to city serve or turning to our resources to serve in the community. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've been proud to say, man, God's church is just stepping up in a time like this. Yeah. So there has been a moment that we can be God's people that way. But what does it look like in our families? What does it look like to be an example in your workplace serving uh, your way in that leadership, being humble, not, not arrogant, not proud, but be humble mm -hmm. and, and know that somehow that servant model that Jesus talked about is really the one that promotes other people yeah. to serve. Yeah, I really think in this day and time, we need to examine ourselves to see as leaders, as spiritual leaders, if we're re really having a heart of a servant leader. and. You know, I just finished and completed uh, my master's and actually several people in Canyon Hills have, is now graduating from a, a master's in, in global leadership. And the word leader is not even mentioned in the Bible. Actually, what we think of as a leader, Jesus turned it around and said, be, be the greatest servant. And so I think in these days and times, especially through some difficult times in our life, there is a need of servant leaders to really rise up. And I think it's a, a good time to examine ourselves because Peter, he makes um, two different appeals to do two different groups of people, one to the elders and one to the younger people in faith. It's not really by age, but it's by faith in their faith. It could be age as well. Of course, that is natural. However, um, he's, he's making these appeals. So I think all of us as believers and followers of Christ, we fit in one or the two categories. And one is not greater than the other. All of us had to pass through a type of being younger and willing to mm -hmm. submit to an elder. Yep. But the eldership role is not only 
for the pastor, Pastor Wendell's our pastor. I'm so grateful that we can be in ministry and, and fulfill a role of an elder, but myself, I have an elder. And, but we, but Pastor Wendell can't do it all. It takes all of us to rise up and examine ourselves and see, are we willing to serve and in a way that we are offering our leadership? But I love that Peter uses the lens of him walking with Christ when he, because he said, I'm a witness. So he witnessed Christ in many different areas. And he also, when he approached this whole topic to the elders, he approached it in a way that he's saying, in a forbearing way, I am like you. I am an elder like you. And I think he's just showing and being an example as he's writing, I'm not writing in a place of high, that I'm higher than you or that I know more, that, but me like you, I want to appeal and make an appeal. The word appeal here is very interesting because it, it, it doesn't mean like I'm commanding you or commissioning you to do or behave in a certain way. It's more of a, it comes from the word paraclete. I'm walking alongside of you and together we can actually grasp a very difficult type of leadership and to serve in, in full submission. And I just love that he didn't try to over assert his leadership, but at the same time he's writing it, he's saying, I'm appealing to you that I'm walking alongside with you and as together we can approach this because he walked a path with Christ understanding that in suffering and in difficult times, we have a choice whether or not we are going to be anxious in our leading and, and subject other people to our anxiety, or we're actually going to see people where they're at and leading them and forbearing them and lifting them up to know Christ. So when he's approaching, so he makes two different appeals to do two different groups. One is to the elders of the church. Mm. And I think that if I believe in these, these times, you can correct me if I'm, I'm wrong, an elder would be a spiritual leader over someone. If you are discipling anyone and Jesus, he says, go into all the world. He doesn't say, just go and tell them the, the gospel. He says, actually disciple them. It's a type of discipling. So the elders of the church are the ones that are taking the role of discipling or shepherding. And so he, he makes this appeal to the elders of the church and he is asking them, to take on the role first of a shepherd. And I love that he said this. He said that um, be shepherds of God's flock that is not under your care. Many times in leadership and in discipling people, we take on too much of an ownership of another person. And that could create an open door for some, uh, some behaviors that, are, that can actually create a dysfunctional type of discipleship, meaning that, you know, I'm going to, I want you to disciple and I want you to serve me the way I want you to. But nope, the way that Peter's appealing to the elders, he says, I want you to shepherd your, the flock as if you understand and know that your flock belongs to God. It's not yours. It's not your sheep. It's not your disciples. They belong to God. And I was thinking about this. If and I've had it happen to me in two different cases that I've been asked to take care of someone's child. And there is a few times that I've been asked to take care of someone's child that really belonged to someone. And they said, hey, can you take care of them? And, and interesting, difficult situations would occur. And who do I call? I call the parent. Hey, they're crying. Do you know what's wrong? And the parent would give me clear instructions. Oh no, they're just crying because they want something and it's no problem. But I've also had children come into my home that they didn't have a parent. I had nowhere to go to. And I think that it's important to know that when we are shepherding and when we're leading, that we're leading in a way that we understand that they belong to God. And who do we go to about the person we're leading? We go to the Lord. He will give us insights. He will help us to understand them. We will see them prophetically and see, wow, God can even show us through his grace why he created certain people and to have that heart. And Peter's saying, he's making an appeal. Hey, I'm walking alongside of you and I want you to lead the younger ones in faith, so when they grow up, they will know how to lead 
other ones. And if we don't get this right, it can mm -hmm. cause a lot of unchristlike behaviors and actually people can fall away from the grace of the Lord in one sense if, or fall away from the church and go away because of hurts and things like this. But if we get this right of shepherding them, shepherding them through the lens that they belong to the Lord mm. and how valuable each one of them are, I think it's a powerful thought. I love it. Yeah, I love in that fact, Peter said that. The invitation is maybe that uh, the invitation is that we are to see them as God sees them. Yes. Not maybe what they're doing right That's now. That's right. Or, you know, you get, if you have kids, we know that they don't behave the way we know that one day they will, if I just get enough time with them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it is really seeing them the way they, their potential is. Yeah. God's potential, what he sees in them. Right. Uh, shepherding them, serving them that yeah. way. Um, it's and not it, lording over them, and, but actually promoting And it's them. not easy to be um, in always, and I think that's why Peter took so much time on it. If you look at the whole, the whole um, passage here, he talks mm -hmm. a lot of time to the elders and few to the, the young ones coming up in faith. But I believe that, you know, there's also a generational, there's some generational challenges in every mm -hmm. new generation coming up. There's some challenges, and this is a real clear instructions on how to help bridge the gaps of miscommunication or not understanding each other. If I would see them in the light, see people that I'm shepherding in the light of they belong to the Lord yep. and he has special instructions on how we're to disciple. It's just a beautiful way to yep. really for people to be understand and, and to understand the love of the Lord. He also said to them, to, he said to the elders, and for you to oversee them in a way that you serve. And I, I just love this as well, because G, uh, Peter right here, he talks about the flock, and we know that when he was recommissioned back and reinstated back into the call, Jesus said to Peter, feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. So that was language he was familiar with, with the Christ, but he also this was language as well, to serve. Because I believe that G, um, Peter, he had um, some memory, some wonderful memory mm. that when it was not even fully revealed of who and what Christ was, was um, going to do and what he would have to do on the cross, he came to his disciples and he served them in a way that he took a position of a servant willing to get down and to serve them by washing their feet. And it's interesting to me, I know, honey, we've been in, we've served in Ethiopia for a long time. And in, in many cultures that where we serve, I was reminded at a time when we would journey there and we didn't have to walk, but many people walked to where we were gathering and they would always wash our feet. Yep. When we arrived there, they would wash our feet. And, and Peter, he was telling them, serve in a way that you're choosing to do that to the people you are leading. And you know what I like about this? I was reminded of a time that the thought came to me when someone was washing my feet, and actually sometimes it's more difficult to allow your feet to be washed than to wash your feet if we had to do that physically. <laughs> but I was thinking about a time when, when we, had a, we, we went through this cultural ritual, I guess, to get our feet washed. But you know, they could really, you can identify a lot by washing someone's feet. You can see if they've journeyed in difficult terrain. You can see if they've had to, to hike. You can see if they've had the resources to take care of their feet. You can see if they've walked, if that was their lifestyle. And like in Ethiopia, they have calluses. They can walk anywhere and not like me. But they could tell on my feet that I wasn't like them, but they still chose to wash my feet. But as we lead, as we lead and we, we choose to be a servant leader, I believe it's when we choose to take, take the apron, the cloth, that G, like Jesus, around our race, and we say, you know, I'm willing to wash who I'm, their feet of who I'm leading, and by valuing and understanding the journey that they walked on. I think in working with a lot of um, young adults, and we call them millennials and even younger now, I think the one Lindsay. thing that the cry the cry out is they want to be heard. And I think the one way as leaders and elders that even Peter at the time, really he, he addressed this, 
serve them in a way like Christ, where you're willing even, and maybe not physically wash their feet, it could be at times, but really is to see their journey. If you see someone's journey, then you're willing to understand where they've been and help lead them where they've been and to where they are to go. I think it's a very important. So I just love the fact that he instructs the elders to serve them. But then he also says, young men, same, mm -hmm. right? So he doesn't just talk to the elders. In fact, he says, young men, in the same way, be submissive yeah. to those who are older. But all of you clothe yourself with humility. Yeah. So he's really speaking to everyone, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. See, I, I, there's a couple of things that, is, that, that I feel like even I saw here the last couple of months when, when it speaks to, as you remember, the, the word of the Lord was saying, you know, serve, serve as overseers, not because you must, not because you have to, but because you are willing. Yeah. I feel like I have so yeah. seen that during this time in City Service. Yeah. That God's people has like, it, it was like, it's, it's like it, we say and we teach about God, we have, we've been created to have a relationship with the Lord. It's almost like the believers want to love their neighbor. We love the Lord, our God, with all our heart. We want to love people. Yeah. And there's something about serving that has been just an incredible gravity in this that I think is powerful. Yeah. Um, and I would say to people that are serving and you've reached the place of your spiritual maturity, that you're, you're serving in such a way that could it be possibly that you are, are meant, and I think it's good to just evaluate this, there's gonna be a lot of people because we've gone through this quarantine time that need soul care, they need counseling, they need a model, they need someone to understand their journey what their, and to be served. If we could, the ones that have been discipled and the ones that could rise up that we could actually not just serve, but we could take someone that is broken alongside of us and say, here, I'm going to value you, give you time and really lead them into a path of understanding who Christ is. I think that it's not only to serve, but it's actually to teach another person. To model, right? It's, to, it's to model the same way. Us to yeah. model or in the same way, bring someone along yeah. and show them. And I'm this gonna, is not easy. That's why I believe Peter even said that there will be a reward for you. It is not easy. It is not easy to, to, to understand or even have the patience to understand the generation that comes in back of us. It's not an easy thing to do. It's not an easy um, process to raise, to, to train up people. It takes a lot of patience, but he's even asking us to go beyond that and saying, but, but to take the position, don't come in and manipulate. Don't try to do this for money. Check your heart and be willing to mm. model how Jesus has served us in one sense to lay down their life. And I just, um, I just think that it's incredibly twofold, but as you serve, allow someone to come and you model them. So it's someone out there that all of us could try find that if we are mature in our faith, that there's someone that needs this type of leadership. Needs someone to be followed. Yeah. Let me continue verse six and seven, because I think that it continues and caps something. It says, humble yourself therefore, under God's mighty hand, yeah. that he may lift you up in due time. Yeah. In fact, what he's saying is he almost this promise that Instead of self-promoting, we feel like, man, unjustly, I'm not promoted the way I need to because yeah. you're serving in the station yeah. that I'm not moving forward. But yeah. what God is promising is if I'm submitting myself, humbling myself yeah. under God's mighty hand, but also when he put me, yeah. I will be lifted up, promoted yeah. by God in due time. Not self-promotion. But I love the next verse if we continue because then he says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And this yeah. is what I think is powerful, the promise in our time here where we live with COVID-19. People are, in fact, there is a lot of anxiety. Mm. It's almost referencing back to this Jesus teaching on the Sermon of the Mount when mm -hmm. he says, seek first his kingdom and all the other things will be added. Yeah. What he's saying is don't worry about tomorrow. If you submit under God's mighty hand, if you submit yourself into his hand, he will promote you in yeah. his time. Yeah. He will care for you yeah. because you submitted yourself yeah. in his hand. So in fact, what he's promising if we live a servant leadership, servant humble life is that 
somehow some of the anxiety that we have to make it on our own, fix it ourselves, yeah. is taken away. And God says, hey, I will take care of you. Yeah. The word submit, it's not really a, a common used word in these days and times, but it's exactly what the word of God says. And, and even to the, the ones young in faith, it says, Like, likewise, submit yourself yep. unto your leader. I know in mentoring a lot of people, and um, even in our process of mentoring, yep. there's been times that we were under people's leadership mm -hmm. that it was difficult. And this is a story I can tell about you. It's not easy to submit and we don't like it, but the word there just, it's, it's, to, it's to obey. And, um, and I think that when our heart is of a posture that as leaders, we're living in submission to God, then we can lead people in a way that they can submit to our teaching that they become not my disciple, the disciple of Christ. So we should trust the Lord and who is in our life and we can submit to them. We don't like it, but it's necessary. But in our leadership, we've been challenging this, haven't we? When we were young, going out to the mission field, um, we had a, Carl was a helicopter pilot, newly helicopter pilot, and we were on our way to Ethiopia. I was very heartbroken because at that time, I realized that um, I had a, I was not able to come back home for four years. So my heart was broken. We ended up having to stay some weeks in Switzerland, where is the headquarters of the, the, the mission organization that we were working with. And the day we arrived, I'm heartbroken. I said goodbye to my family. We arrive on their, their compound. <laughs> and um, the first way we were greeted was, can you please pick up all the rocks on all the, there was landing pads, several of them. And it was a huge lot of property. And he's, they were like, can you and Carl just go out? This is the first thing that they have to do on arrival. I just left our home country our, and our, we left our parents. And they're like, can you just go and pick up all the stones on this property? And um, <laughs> being, being a young pilot, it wasn't the easiest thing to do. We were tired, we were jet lagged. I really, that was not the greeting I was looking for. However, it was a small thing, but as we did it, it was the glue that caused us to be able to work under the leadership of them that we were able to reach unreached people groups. So I think it's important as we are young in faith to not be afraid of the word submit. And it doesn't mean that you're not going to be listened to. It doesn't mean that your voice isn't valued. It's just a biblical principle that allows the Holy Spirit to do a transformative work within us. I know in mentoring, sometimes I get people that just want me to fix their life and, and just do what, say the magical word to fix their life. But many times they don't show up or they don't come up with the questions or they're not willing to take what it, give what it takes to experience true discipleship. And that's heartbreaking. So the word submit here under leadership is very important even for the young ones to evaluate their own heart. Is my heart at a place where I am fully surrendered unto God that I can actually submit to men, to a leader that God has appointed. So I think that's an important um, passage to examine our own hearts so, in that area. So, Je so Jennifer <laughs> is suggesting that I wasn't humble then. <laughs> well, you <laughs> maybe you weren't, no, 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 I, but actually right. you good. submitted. <laughs> it's good. She was. Yeah, I did. I was kind of angry. I was kicking those stones, and I was yeah. like, "Man, why am but I kicking did those stones?" It didn't make sense. <laughs> In fact, I was really irritated. But uh, you she, were the she pilot. She told it very nice. Yeah, I felt like that was like. But he was testing me. Yeah. In fact, it was an older gentleman that really was testing yeah. if I was willing, and I didn't yeah. get it fully at the time. Yeah. Uh, but there was something about him seeing, wanting to see our heart. Yeah. Because there, there is something when we submit ourselves under God's mighty hand. Yeah. That he may lift us up in yeah. due time. So good. That he will lift us up in due time. In mm. fact, in that place, if you cast then all your anxiety on him, we can trust that he cares for us. Yeah. I think that's the message here. Try something radically counterculture serve your way out of anxiety challenges uh, the lord is inviting us to live that life yeah and he will promote us we can try to self-promote but i promise you there's nothing like god's promotion on your life yeah. so let me pray would you today maybe you watched you tune in uh you looked at the at, at the at, at this wednesday night bible study and something spoke to your heart 
I want to just lead you in a prayer. I think lots of people across the country is struggling with anxiety or stress. It might be many of you lost even a job. Yeah. Let me just pray for you as we submit ourselves to the Lord. Yeah. Under His mighty hand, He will promote you. He has something better around the corner. I think that when we serve and we choose to just live yeah. that life, representing Him, serving people around us, God will promote us. Yeah. God will for sure uh, promote you and, and help us also not to, to live anxious, but to live in this trust that God cares for me. Yeah. So Jesus, I thank, thank you, you for everyone that's watching that has been with us today, this evening, this Wednesday night. And you spoke into them through the television screen as we're not able to gather yet, but soon. We thank you, Lord, that as you speak to them, Lord, you know where they're at. You know maybe the challenges they're facing. Yeah. And I'm not diminishing that in any way, losing a job or losing things that is challenging, yes, practically at this moment. Yeah. But I pray as we submit ourselves to you, hallelujah, you are faithful to promote us in your time, in, in due time. And you are also able to even take that anxiety because we, we know that you care for us. You know that you have something better. So we do this. We seek your kingdom first and we know all the other things will be added. In fact, you're inviting us to look at you that way. And I pray that we find this lifestyle that so many believers have this time to you serve someone, do an act of kindness and see if we're not sowing so many good things yeah. that the Lord will just take care of you. He will bless yes. us as we serve someone else. Yes. So I pray blessing over your people, blessing over families across the city, blessing wherever they are in Jesus' name. Amen. Honey, it's okay. I would like to also just pray into um, the the role of an elder and really is rising up to seeing the role of that leader. And then also those who need that type of mentoring or need that type of leadership, that there would just be a Holy Spirit connection from the elder to the ones that are young in faith or if you need it there, there's just, um, the, it's just how it's meant to be in the church. So I just wanna pray That's for so those important. today that, you know, if read the, the scripture on how we are to walk and lead others in a way that serve. But Lord, I just pray in this time and the season, Lord, I just pray into the, the need of people needing to be, be discipled, needing to be encouraged, needing to see a model because they come from a life of brokenness. So I just pray for leaders that we would rise up and we would understand through your grace and through the call that we would be submitted unto you, willing to serve in this capacity, not for our own gain, Lord, but to see others that will grow in you and then in return, they can lead others. So I just pray for your grace through the Holy Spirit that you will lead these divine connections of the ones that are to disciple to the ones that need discipleship. And I just thank you, yes, Lord. Lord. Give us your lens of, you, of seeing other people. And I just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah. Be blessed. God bless you. To see you soon. It's yes. Worship. Yeah.
you walk into the room Sickness starts to vanish Every hopeless situation Oh, it ceases to exist And when you Yeah.